Uh, and in fact, uh, the sky was cloudy all day. We heard all kinds of predictions by the weather makers, or the, excuse me, the weather men and the weather women. Um, <coughs> that it was going to rain and tornadoes were going to come and it was going to be really bad. Really bad. Uh, it was overcast and gray all day and so Karen and I decided we'll just stay at home. We'll just stay at home and, and we'll wait for the rain and, and, and we waited all day, all day, for the rain that never came until we were asleep. We stayed at home. We did not venture out. We waited, and we waited. And, and regarding that day, also, uh, a friend of mine uh, also waited for the rain and the storms that day. And, and later on in the day, uh, that friend sent an email. Uh, that email was about what it was like to wait that day. Because you see, one year ago, that friend uh, had, had lost a loved one, had lost a friend who was, because this friend was sitting at the bedside of another friend who was about to die. Listen to the words of the email shared with me. It goes like this. I'm sitting here in my living room, having anticipated the rain all day, and it has finally arrived. I did FaceTime with my family for a while earlier, which was nice, but the rain. I decided to find something on Netflix to watch as the angel food cake bait. But the rain. I tore price tags off the jeans that I bought this week, feeling gratitude for the ability to help others. But the rain. <coughs> I chose to watch a documentary about a Holocaust survivor. But the rain. I was flipping channels earlier in the day. Noel came on with Robin Williams. But the rain. But the rain falls. And I'm feeling sad. It was raining last year as I sat with her. It was raining as she asked how long I thought that she had to live. It was raining as she told me that she wanted to be remembered as one who sought the face of God. It is raining now. I remember and feel just as alone tonight where tears are falling like the raindrops. I remember the smell. I remember the sounds, the, the silence, the, the couch I slept on, the, the chair I sat in, the bed she laid on, the stillness as she departed the confines of this human existence. How I pray that the shedding of the body has given her peace, given her total freedom, given her the gift of being without fear. Then the lightning fills the room, and I wonder, could that be her showing me she's free? Then the thunder claps. Could that be her saying she has found the face of God? I share this email with you today because today we are beginning a journey. We're beginning a journey. It's a journey of hope. It's a journey of hope as we, we prepare to, to come again to that day of on Christmas when we celebrate the birth of God's Son. It's a journey of hope, and, and sometimes hope is all we have. Sometimes hope is all we have. You know, our world is filled with people with, with broken hopes and dreams. And yet sometimes hope is the only thing we have. Many of you have faced struggles in the past year. Many of you have, have been in difficult situations that you, you could not have imagined. Many of you have, <coughs> have been there and, and in the midst of those difficult situations, you, you've somehow held on to hope. There has been death. There has been heartache. Uh, there has been the loss of of all kinds of things, the loss of jobs, the loss of security, the loss of relationships. 
about hope. It's about hoping that God will be with us once again. Lyanna and I read from the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah calls God to appear decisively. Isaiah calls for God to, to come again and to, to open the heavens so that the nations will tremble. And if Isaiah were writing as a prophet today in today's world, what would, be, what would Isaiah be writing for? What would Isaiah hope for? Perhaps Isaiah would hope for peace and reconciliation on the streets of Ferguson, Missouri. Perhaps Isaiah would, would focus and, and pray and hope for peaceful reconciliation between uh, Christians and Muslims and other religions all across the world. If the prophet Isaiah were writing today, what would Isaiah hope for? Perhaps Isaiah would hope for a discovery to end the threat of Ebola. Or maybe for the end of cancers of all varieties. I was startled this week when I read that Father T.J. Martinez had died. Some of you may, know, may have known Father T.J. Martinez. Father Martinez started Cristo Rey Jesuit School not too far from here at the old Mount Carmel Catholic High School campus over uh, just north of Garden Villas. And uh, Father Martinez was, T.J. was a, a wonderful man. He died of stomach cancer in his 40s. What do we hope for? One of the things that I hope for is that I hope that William Jamal Ellis, uh, the young man that accosted me during worship in September, I pray that William Jamal Ellis will find some peace in his life. <coughs> I pray that I pray that he will follow the mental health treatment plan that is given to him at Rust State Hospital. I have this hope. I have this hope that, that he will someday find some peace in his life. My friends, this is a season of hope. And we have this hope that, that God will come into our lives and that, that God will enter our world and into our hearts and, and give us life. And we, we, we hope for peace. We, we hope for reconciliation. We, we hope for freedom from pain. We hope that, that persons without faith will find faith and begin to discover the power and presence of God in their lives. And when God comes anew, we pray and hope that God will be merciful. Look at verse 8 of the passage that we read together. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, and we are the clay. And you are our Potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The prophet Isaiah was hoping and praying for the reconciliation of all God's people. And, and, and there are so many ways that we become estranged from one another and from God. We human beings, we, we have, we have way, all kinds of ways to, to separate ourselves from one another. To offer our prize and get, gets in the way, and, and we are unable to receive achieve reconciliation with those that we love and we care about because our our pride, we, we want to hold on to what we believe is right. Too often we hold fast to hurts and heartaches that separate us from one another and continue to isolate us even more. But the prophet Isaiah says that we hope that God will come again and that God will be merciful with us and forgive us and, and offer us grace in the midst of pain and heartache. And this is our faith, my friends. This is our hope. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of a child, we also prepare to celebrate God's willingness to come to us and offer us grace and forgiveness and hope in the midst of the pain and heartache that we have caused with each other and for one another. This is our faith and this is our hope. No matter how bad things are, we are reminded that we belong to God and all the earth belongs to, our, to God. And this is our faith and this is what we celebrate during this holy season. That God comes to us once again and God offers us hope and peace and joy. 
even though we have messed things up royally. This season reminds us also that this is a time for self-examination. And so I ask you, what is your greatest hope for this holy season? What is, what is that one thing that you really hope for during this holy season? I pray that, that you will seek God's guidance as you seek that thing that you hope for. And I pray also that, that you might discover along the way that sometimes God calls us. God calls us to be the hope that someone else is looking for. God calls us to, to open our hearts in ways that perhaps others might not have opened their hearts to us. And God calls us to be the hope that someone else is looking for. So here's what I'd like to invite you to do this week as an assignment. I, I pray that this week that you will make a commitment during this season of preparation, during this season of Advent, to, to offer kindness and mercy to someone in your life and in your world that they might experience anew the power of God's hope and mercy during this holy season. You know, it's, it's hard during this holy season to, to stay focused on what, what's, what's important. But I pray that, that as you go through this season, that you will discover anew God's mercy and God's forgiveness in your life, and that as you discover that, you might offer that to someone else along the way, that you might become the hope that they are looking for.